Hey YouTube, today we're continuing our course in System Design Fundamentals. Today we will talk about the master slave database and what is this architecture and why we need it. So, <clears throat> a master slave database um, configuration is a type of database replication setup commonly used to enhance uh, data availability, fault tolerance, and read uh, scalability in distributed systems. And in this configuration, we have a main two types of databases the master and the slaves and before we go to the master let's talk first about one single database let's say we have a server and we have a database and the server is uh, doing read and write um, operations to the database and once for 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 uh, um, and the server saves a lot of data into the database and the database reach it, its uh, its limitation and we start to add more resources to the database but um it's not enough we have a problem two problems with this with this architecture the first one is that if this database went down our server cannot get any data anymore so we have a single point of failure the second thing if we add more resources this is has a limitation because we cannot add we cannot add more cpu and ram forever so w what is a solution for that is to manage the and um, to so, um, save the data in in more um have two databases one to support the write operation and the other one will support the read operation so we will make sure that our data is not overloaded with loads so let's just try to see what this will look like so we will have the server and we have the master we have two types of database as you can see the master and the slave and the master um, the master database is primary database server is uh, in in the configuration it is responsible for handling both read and uh, write operations but mainly it hand it's supposed to handle the uh, write operations and and um, all write operations such as insert update deletes are performed through the master and the master after the master um, considered to um, replicate all the data to the slaves when the new request is coming so if the server is sending new data to the master the master will add it to the database and replicate it to the to the to all the slaves um we have the slave database the slave database also known as a replica database or a secondary database uh, server that uh, replicate data from the master they are read only meaning they, they can only be used for read operations like select and queries and um, slave databases uh, periodically receives copies of data from the master to keep their data synchronized the synchronization can be uh, near a little time with a minimal delay depending on the configuration on the, and the network uh, latency so as you can see right now if we are in the system that is read heavy right now the read is is done by three uh, servers not only just one so it's it will be we, we reduce the latency uh, let's talk about some benefits of this architecture and uh, the first thing that we can do we could do about the data redundancy redundancy so um master uh, master slave replication provides data redundancy if the master database becomes unavailable due to a hardware failure or maintenance one of the slaves can be promoted to act as a new master this minimizes the downtime and ensures that availability so as you can see here if this if this master went down we will have one of the slaves will be promoted to be the new master okay and all the right operations will go through this slave and this slave will replicate all the data to the other two slaves once the master is done we will have another will with this, this slave could be a slave again and the master remain the master or, or we could have add more slaves um, and remain the the remain this database as a master so what is this what i've done I, I removed the um, oh I removed the okay I removed it by accidentally so we have we said that we have data redundancy 
as the first key benefit. The second thing that we can talk about is the load balancing. So in read insensitive workloads such as select and queries can be distributed across multiple slaves databases um, reducing the load on the master this improves the read scalability and overall system performance as you can see right now the read is uh, going through three servers and we improve the read um, uh, the read and we improve the, lo uh, um, the the we balance the actual load so the master is not fully loaded with the read requests um, we could say also we have it's a great in the backup so uh, the slave databases serve as uh, a form of backup like in the event of data corruption or accidental data loss on the master you can potentially restore the data from one of the uh, synchronized slave databases also it's a great in fault tolerance so um, the presence of slave databases enhance fault tolerance even if one or more slave databases experience issue the master can continue to handle write operations um, we could have like um, it's also great in reporting like um, reporting sorry so slave databases are commonly are, are, uh, are commonly used for general reports and analytics since they don't handle write operations running complex and uh, uh, resource insensitive analytic queries on slave doesn't impact the performance so as you can see there are a lot of benefits but also we have some consideration that we should carry about when it comes to work with um, the, the uh, master slave uh, architecture database so the first thing that we have the synchronization delay so in this one there are maybe a slight delay in synchronizations between a master and database this delay depends on factors like network latency and the replication mechanism also we have uh, considerations about the data consistency and data consistency so basically while the master slave replication ensures data redundancy it doesn't in, uh, inherently uh, guarantee immediate consistency across all replicas applications may need account uh, for eventual uh, eventual consistency also we have um, we uh, could other consideration is that the co um, configuration and monitoring because uh, a proper configuration and ongoing monitoring are essential to ensure that the health and the performance of the replicas set up so we you should have a configuration and monitoring for each replica um, we want to talk about the scaling right so master slave replicas primarily uh, pr primarily address read scalability and data redundancy for sorry for write scalability we could use uh, for write scalability we could use other techniques like sharding or complex replica setup like master master uh, maybe will be needed um we in the future we make we'll make videos about charting and the master master uh, database or the multi-master databases uh, to see how we handle these uh, types of databases so in summary a master slave database configuration is, av uh, is available tool for improving data availability fault tolerance and the read scalability in distributed uh, data systems it is commonly used to uh, uh, in scenarios where the read heavy workloads or high available are essentially and required so that's it for this video and i hope you like my content if you like my content make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video and see you guys in future problem